Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Honeybee Stamps. In today's video, we are going to take a more painterly approach to ink blending. We're going to use specialty brushes, vary our stroke, and even layer inks to create some really realistic looking pansies. We're going to start with the Lovely Layers Pansy die set. I'm actually going to die cut all of these dies, every single one, out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. I like to use 110 pound cardstock because that does a better job of really picking up all the details that the die adds to the cardstock. Now I'm ready to start ink blending. I've got the first four layers for the largest flower. I'm going to start with the smallest one here and I'm going to ink blend a little bit of mustard seed at the center. I'm using this specialty sh uh, blending brush. This is a shader brush from Waffle Flower Crafts. It's just a smaller round brush and it's just to make it a little bit easier to get into some of these tighter spots. I'm going to also use this mustard seed at the center of this next layer of the pansy and just ink blend a kind of a gradation where it's darker in the center and gets kind of lighter yellow as I work my way out. Now that I finish with the mustard seed I'm going to move on to ripe persimmon and again with that shader one brush that round small brush just add a little bit of that ripe persimmon to the top of that first layer now we're going to move on to the petals I have a shaded lilac here I'm just going to ink blend on the outside of all of these petals kind of ink blend all the way up to the yellow with this beautiful kind of periwinkle color and once I finish that I'll move on to the other layer here and also ink blend with the uh, shaded lilac. I am just using a blending tool for this. This is just kind of your basic ink blending. Once I finish with that shaded lilac we are going to grab some wilted violet and then that shader one brush again, that round one, and just add a little bit of this wilted violet to the very edges, the very tips of these petals. This little bit of contrast between the, the wilted violet and the shaded lilac adds a lot of depth and realism to these petals. And it's just a really subtle thing, but it really changes the look a lot. Now I'm moving on to uh, shaded lilac again and this shader 2 brush you can see it's more linear has a bit of an angle to it I'm going to start my stroke at the tallest point of the brush and then move downwards towards the smaller point so basically start at the top and then make my stroke move downwards and I'm following along the detail lines that were created by the die on the petals and that's where I'm deciding to add these well basically these shadows that make it the petal look really ruffly and really pretty. I'm going to repeat this on the smaller one, the smaller petal uh, layer as well. And now we're going to move on to Wilted Violet and with this same shader br brush, shader brush 2, we're going to add a little bit of this Wilted Violet which is darker just to the very edge of those uh, areas that I highlighted or I added a shadow I should say with the Wilted Violet. Just a little bit at the very edge of those folds and that's just going to make that pop even a little bit more those little folds that we kind of created and I'll finish up this layer and then we will be done with our two uh, top layers for our large flower now I'm going to move on to our next two layers these are kind of the back layers I'm going to start with seedless preserves and ink blend over this petal really quickly with this maroon kind of color. I'm going to ink blend at the top one too. I'm focusing ink blending the areas that have the actual details, the kind of scored lines that the die creates because those are the ones, that, that's the areas that's visible. Now I moved on to Wilted Violet and I'm ink blending right over that seedless preserve and that kind of creates a new ink color, just more kind of warmy um, wilted violet which I really like. Now I moved I'm moving on to uh, Dusty Concord, which is a darker purple, and with that shader one brush, that round, small blending brush, I'm just adding a little bit of this Dusty Concord at the very edges of the petals, just making them a little darker at the tips. Then I'm going to grab my shader two, that linear one that I like to use to add those like folds or shadows in the petals. And with that Dusty Concord, I'm going to repeat basically what I did with the first two layers, kind of going along the score lines that the die created on the cardstock following those lines with my shader brush to highlight those details and really make these petals look ruffly and um, like they have some folds in them. It's just a really pretty way to kind of add a little bit more texture to 
these flowers. Once I finished with that dusty concord, I'm going to use a little bit of black soot with this shader two brush and just add it to the very edges where I have one of those kind of folds, just to kind of darken a little bit more, make a little more contrast. And once I finish that, I will be done with my back two layer. So we're almost done with this flower. We do now have a two tiny little layers for the flower center. So here are the layers right here. I'm gonna start with this very small one that looks kind of like a V. And with a shader zero brush, which is just a even smaller round brush, just add a little bit of this shaded lilac to the sides of this layer, this kind of V. And once I finish with that, we'll move on to the, the center. This will actually go on top of the center. So the center here, we're gonna start with mustard seed. It's basically ink blend that whole little layer with mustard seed. Then we'll move on to ripe persimmon and ink blend the top of it. This is kind of like a mountain, so ink blending the top of the mountain. And then we'll finish with a little bit of aged mahogany just to make it a little deeper and a little rustier. And once we finish with that, we can layer our whole flower together. You can see here, I just quickly put that little V on top of the center so you can kind of see where it goes. Now let's put it all together. We're gonna to start with that little V, add a little bit of liquid adhesive to the backside, and then I will stick it on top of that flower center, the very center. Then I'll pick up that center, add some liquid adhesive to the back of that, and then add it to our top petal layer. Once I get that in place, we'll then adhere it to the next petal layer. And these were the first two that we created with the lighter combo of shaded lilac and wilted violet. Then we'll layer up, up these two back layers together. I kind of use, there's like one flat petal. You can see I pointed out real quick there. That's kind of what I use as my register to kind of line everything up. And here's the finished pansy. Lots of texture there with those little folds that we created very easily with that shader blending brush and it has a lot of contrast because the back petals are a little bit different than the front petals, which I really like. Now we're gonna move on to the leaves and stems. I'm gonna start with Twisted Citron and just quickly ink blend kind of the upper third of the stems and leaves with that shade. And then we'll move on to Mode Lawn, ink blend the kind of starting from the bottom of the, the stems and leaves up two thirds. And once we finish with that, we'll we'll do an even darker green, which is pine needles and ink blend the bottom third with that really dark green color. And then we're gonna add some details. So I'm gonna grab my shader two brush, that linear brush, and with mode lawn, I'm gonna start to highlight the veins in the leaf here. So I'm going along with those score lines that the die created on this leaf following along with my blending or my shader brush and just highlighting or oh, those score lines, just make drawing attention to them with by making them a little bit darker. Then once I did finish with mode lawn, I did the lower third with more uh, pine needles. I couldn't do mode lawn um, on that portion because it was already had uh, it was already pretty dark from the pine needles blend at the beginning. So basically I repeated this for the second petal, just added those um, lines with the shader brush with mode lawn and pine needles. And now I'm taking a little bit of mode lawn and highlighting some of the um, the folds in the, the stems. And then I'm gonna grab black soot because I want even more contrast. Add a little bit of this black soot to the very bottom of the leaves and stems just to make it even darker. And then we're gonna finish with a little aged mahogany. I have a little bit left in this shader brush and I'm just gonna add a little bit to the edges of the leaves here and there. This red will kind of muddy that twisted citron a little bit, just kind of tone down that bright green and make it look a little bit more realistic, I think, but just kind of, you know, varying that green a little bit more. Now we're moving on to our smaller flower. Starting with this first layer here, this is actually the back layer. I'm gonna ink blend with a little bit of mustard seed and then we're gonna move on to shaded lilac. We're basically gonna do what we did on the big flower but a much smaller scale. After I did the outer petals with the shade lilac, then I've grabbed a little bit of wilted violet and my shader one brush, which is again is the, the round brush, just added it to the very edge. Then with the shader two, that linear brush, I'm gonna go back to that shaded lilac and start to add in some of those folds to the petal. 
And after we kind of establish them with a the shaded lilac, then we'll go to the wilted violet here and just kind of add a little bit more of that wilted violet to the edges where those folds are just to get a little bit more contrast. And that's actually it for the back layer. Now the top layer, this time it's a little bit reversed. The top layer is gonna be our darker combo, starting with the seedless preserves again. Kind of do a base layer of that, and then I'll go over it with Wilted Violet to kind of create a new shade of purple. Then with Dusty Concord and my shader uh, one brush, just that round brush, just kind of go on the very tips of the petals with this darker purple, just kind of highlight the, that edge. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that Dusty Concord to the very center of this petal to create a gradation over that petal, which that was a little bit different than what we did originally with the very large pansy. Now I'm gonna add some of those folds again using my shader two brush, that linear brush and the dusty concord. And then I'll finish up with a little bit of black soot and that shader two, just to kind of hot, go on the along the edge where those folds are and that will just make them um, have a little more contrast and pop even more. Now we're gonna put this um, flower together starting with that dark um, petal that actually goes on top of the light and then I will add some adhesive to the stem and that will go right on top of the dark petal and that will complete our smaller flower that's kind of more like a bud and we are now all done with all of our ink blending I think our texture and our details look amazing on our flowers now we're ready to move on to the background so I have a three by and a quarter by four and a half panel and I'm going to spritz it with some distress oxide spray just to kind of add some interest to and, and a kind of a simple background starting with fossilized amber in the lower right corner then I'll move on to some peeled paint we're going to get some green in here kind of incorporating some of the colors that we have on our pansy and leaves then a little bit of wilted violet and add a, a more of that because I want to get a little bit more of that purple in there and then another little spritz of peeled paint and that's our finished background really simple but it's going to add some nice um, interest with such that texture of the spray now I'm going to move on to a sentiment I have the best of everything stamp set I just grabbed a sentiment from that set I inked it up in embossing watermark ink now I'm dipping it into gold embossing powder then of course I'll just heat set with my heat tool now that the sentiment is done I will grab the coordinating die set grab the matching die for that sentiment and then run it through my die cutting machine and we'll have our sentiment ready to go and now we have all our parts to kind of put it together I'm going to start with the uh, sprayed panel. I'm going to grab some liquid adhesive and just glue it right down um, to the center of our card front. And once I get that in place, I'll then actually grab my um, plate to my die cutting machine, just kind of hold that um, down while the glue sets up a little bit. And then we'll start to arrange our flower and our flowers and leaves here. And once I get all of these die cuts. Uh, the way I want, then I'll grab a piece of press and seal, place it over them, and then pick them all up in that arrangement. So I just pick it up here, flip it over, and then I'm going to start to add some foam adhesive to the backside so I can pop these die cuts up. And I do even add foam adhesive to the very small, kind of spindly parts of these stems and leaves because I want to put my sentiment over there. And so I did want to make sure I had them supported as well. So I removed the backing, stuck the die cuts down, then removed the press and seal. Now I'm going to grab the negative that, that I die cut the sentiment out of, pop the die cuts back in, use a piece of press and seal to kind of press over those die cuts, and then I'll carefully remove that negative away. And now my sentiment is perfectly straight. Then I'll grab some foam adhesive and start adding it to the back side of the die cut. Once I've added foam adhesive to the back side, I'll then remove the backing, which I'm doing here. I do want to point out that I do double up the foam adhesive behind the U uh, because it's not over any of the leaves. And I realized after I stuck this down that I needed to double up the foam adhesive on the back side of the of as well. So I did just grab another real um, small piece of foam adhesive, added it to the back, and then um, stuck that back down. And that will actually complete my card. I'll hold up the camera here so you can get a good look at all the details on this a really fun card. I just love how these pansies turned out. I love the soft uh, ripple looked 
over the petal and leaves and the contrast I think between that soft those soft gradations and that splatter background is really fun as well I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video if any questions about the products I use please check out the links below in the description thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day